Okay, so I'm the Wired Martian and today I'm going to show you how to use eCaucus Payment API. So if you don't know what that is, eCaucus has an offering on the online payments and it's called the IK Pay API. So this allows you to take online payments and it allows you to fully integrate within a custom website. So I'm going to show you some parts of it and others I'm going to leave out. So I'll just show you how it works. Okay, cool. So here's what you're going to need first. You are going to need an Ikoka account. So I do have an Ikoka account and it has to be a production account, which means it must have been fee cut. As soon as you have that, um, you will have access to this dashboard. And in this dashboard, there's this online section. And uh, actually, there's this uh, integration section. And we're interested in the payment API. So when you come on this part, um, this will allow you to generate keys. And these are the keys that we're going to use for the API. So it will allow you to generate an application ID and an application key. And then from here, there's also a link to the API's documentation. So API overview. So here it outlines creating a payment link, getting the status of a payment link, some other stuff, getting the payment link transactions and so on and so forth. The other thing you're gonna need is this or this repository. So if you go to the Coca GitHub, there's this IKPay API examples. You will need this as a reference. And when I'm done, the example that I have, I'm going to put here as well. So you'll be able to access it. Let's start. So what I have is I have an application here and this application is from here. So I just created a new one in the node.js folder and I have a pay API app. It has a back end, which is an API and it has a front end. The back end if we go there, we just have the payling.js file, which just has some keys. Again, if you pick any one of these things and look at it, uh, this code will pretty much be there. So I'm going to go over it quickly. So there's one function for creating a payment link. So you see, you get the URL, you create some kind of a signature, and then you send it. And there's the same, uh, another one for getting the payment by ID. And then there's another one that says get, uh, that just gets the payment history. So I've also set up a Postman collection here. So you can see, for example, if you create a payment. So this is the body that you need. Again, you can put some of these things in the API, but I was just, expose them here. And then you can look at the documentation and what it field means to this. So for an example, let's try to send this. So when we send it, you can see we get a payment link, we get a payment URL, payment link ID, external reference. The external reference is just an auto-generated GUID. It could be anything. Uh, and then if you click for an example on this payment, this is what you get. Basically, you have a site where you can pay using Google Pay, you can pay using EFT, or you can pay using a credit card. Okay, so that's what this is. So uh, if we take, for an example, this uh, payment link ID, and then we put it here. By the way, this stuff is from uh, this index.json. So I'm using Express, and I've set up uh, four routes create a payment and there's another one for getting a payment by ID and send. So that will give me the status of that payment link. So whether it's been paid or not. So you can see it hasn't been paid. You have a webhook. So if you go back here, so you can, so this webhook speaks to this callback. So whenever a payment is done successful or declined, a response from a server is sent to this URL that you supply. So in my case, it will be this. 
And then there's another one to get the payment history. So if we go to the payment history, you can see we can specify a date range. And uh, it pretty much gives me all the paid links that were created, whether they were paid or not, the amounts, the external reference, and so on and so forth. Let's try paying this one that we've just uh, we've just created. So let's go there. I'm gonna use Google Pay. Click continue. It's gonna present me a page with some pre-filled information, and I just have to fill in the rest and hit pay. So it presents me with my bank's authentication page and it goes through a 3DS payment verification. So I just need to confirm the payment on my uh, bank application. So the payment has been confirmed, authentication was successful, and then it'll try to process that payment. As you can see, it says the payment was successful and it sent me on this success page. So this speaks to this success URL from here. So that's where I said it, it should go when it's done a successful payment. So now that we've paid it, let's get the status and see if it has been paid. Okay, you can see that it's it's been paid. Now what I wanna do is I actually want it to go to my front ends pages. So I have this front end here that I have written, I've written using view. At the moment it has this success page. It has a failure page and it has a payment history page. So the payment history page already works. It just pulls a list of payments that were made. So, so in order to get this to work, we actually need real remote URLs. So we're gonna use Ingrok. So that's, you basically just need to download Ingrok. And then I think you need to have a, an account because it needs like an authentication token to get it to work. This is so we can try and do this locally. Okay, so I, I already have Ingrok set up on my machine so so all you need to do for that is you just need to run this command i'm actually going to copy this because i also need my front end to run um using ingrok so when you run it it gives you a url that that forwards all the requests to it to my local and uh, now when we are creating this, we're going to say for this page, which is payment success. So I want it to come here. So that's slash payment slash success. Failure. Um, let's send this request and we'll get a new pay link. And then we're just gonna pay it. It should ideally go to my page. I believe this is just the initial setup of Ngrok. So you can see it went to my successful page, which is just that. Okay, cool. So now let's see what the actual response is from that endpoint. So in this case, let's try the webhook. Since we are limit, limited by financials, we are going to stop this in Grok and we're going to run this one. So we've got a new URL and this URL is for the backend. So I actually need to go and this payment, payment slash webhook slash callback. Okay, cool. So ideally we're gonna make another payment, um, but in this other in this scenario, we should receive some kind of a log uh, somewhere here. Actually, let's stop this again and run it. Should get some kind of a log that says this was hit and it should log the, res the body that we got from there and then respond to that URL with an okay. Okay, so let's see if that works. Okay, let's run this. Okay, got a pay link, gonna pay it. 
this should go to a page that doesn't exist because remember we stopped our ngrok uh, locally and it says it was unsuccessful so we've got a failure it went through a failure not sure why but i think my bank doesn't like me doing this because it actually goes and takes away the amount but if we go to our app we should have received something so here it is receive data from webhook uh, which is just payment that that's actually my original url and this is why it got the payment link the status uh, we got a response that it actually failed so if we go here and we check uh, you can see it's unpaid so yeah so that's how the payment api works so yeah thanks for watching